How much pressure does this chorus of premiers put on the government? A ton, a carbon priced ton. It puts a ton of pressure on them. And especially coming from Anthony Fury, you cannot find a premier who is more friendly and familiar to federal liberals. So again, it just tells you the fact that he feels moved for electoral and political reasons in his own province in order to be faithful to what his own residents want. The fact that he has to move to say to the federal government, this is a policy that we cannot tolerate. It just shows you the degree of political pushback that the government is and will continue to feel as we approach the April 1st deadline for a carbon tax increase. What are the chances the Trudeau government hits pause, backs down? Do you see that being in the card, Scott? Very low, very, very low chance that that's going to happen. And the reason is they had an opportunity. There was a firestorm of protest and political discussion. You'll remember when the federal government exempted home heating fuel from the carbon tax a few months ago. If they were going to do a climb down, if they were going to make the argument that Andrew Fury makes, which is, all right, we'll pause the carbon tax until... Inflation, as an example, is is well and surely established below the 2% band or at the 2% band. They would have done it months ago. The fact that they didn't, they've stuck by their guns. Uh, and their argument really comes down to two things. One, this will help us combat climate change, something that's difficult for people to measure and feel. And second, eight out of 10 households will get more back in the carbon rebate than they will pay in the carbon tax. But of course, that happens in an indirect way. When you file your taxes and the return comes in and everything else is washed out with your income tax and surtaxes and all that else is applied. The challenge of the carbon tax is as of April 1st, you're gonna feel it to the tune of three cents per liter every time you fill your car. That's gonna be visceral, that's gonna be there, that's gonna be hitting you in the face. That rebate comes in a much, much less tangible way far down the road. Yeah, so do you think the government could do a better job of explaining what you have just explained to us as to why this is so important? Um, they've tried. Uh, to be fair to them, they've tried. They've rebranded the rebate. They've tried to up their communications around what it means and uh, how it affects various households. Um, but it's a hell of a job to turn to Canadians and say, you're going to pay more and like it. Uh, particularly when people are struggling already with an uncertain economy and with a cost of living crisis. So this is the challenge that the government faces. It doesn't appear as though it's going to back down. I do not believe that the arguments it's equipped itself with are going to cut mustard. This is overwhelmingly a negative policy instrument in terms of the way Canadians regard it. This is overwhelmingly a drag on the Trudeau government's popularity. And this is overwhelmingly something that people doubt has a material effect on fighting for a better, cleaner climate. And so I think the government has put itself into a very tight political corner. All right. Before you go, I have to get a quick thought from you, please, on what a productive meeting would look like between Trudeau and Premier <laughs> Smith today. Well, I suppose it would maintain some degree of politeness. I think this is really interesting. There's no agenda attached to this meeting. They're just getting together and their disagreements are many. They will find lots to discuss and lots to disagree about. I think, to be honest with you, this may be a purely political meeting. It may be in the political interest of both Justin Trudeau and Danielle Smith to stand inches apart and disagree with one another over a range of issues. That might be good politics for Danielle Smith, and that might be good politics for Justin Trudeau. I particularly watch to see whether they clash swords over the future of the Canada Pension Plan. I think that would be the strongest argument for the prime minister to make, the strongest ground for him to fight on. But uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly where there are many, many, many disagreements lead them. Scott, read for us this morning. Scott, thanks so much.